Good morning. Just thought I would give you a little tour around the allotment this late May and show you what's grown and what isn't. I thought I would just take you around each board and show you um, what I've got grown in each one. I haven't got every board I filled by any means. Some of them are still empty, but we'll show you. First though, I'm going to hand you over to this weird little wifey in the back garden at home and show you what's grown there. This is the potato patch. It's at the back end of the garden in a little corner. Happily, it's quite sheltered because um, of all the frosts in April. I mean, it, we must have had 20 frosts out of 30 nights or even more, 25 even. And um, we did plant these pretty early. It's my first earlies, so I've got Swift and I've got Home Guard. Um, and we planted them early because when we put them in the cupboard to chit, the, the sprouts were really long. So we put them in early and then we've got all these frosts. Nonetheless, they would have been frosted whenever I'd put them in because we've had such a, a lot of late frosts. They did get caught on the ends of the leaves. Uh, these ones in particular, they, they all browned off a little bit, but it wasn't too much. Um, this garden's kind of nestled down quite low. So uh, as I say, it's sheltered. Slow coming on, um, very slow, but I think they're starting to come away a bit better now. Um, my only worry is because I want to get something else in here. I want to get my squash in here as a second crop, but I just don't know whether because of the slow start, will be much slower getting to harvest and then it'll be slower getting the squash in. So we'll have, just have to wait and see what happens there. I've got lots of things hard enough here. Uh, in this one here, we've got peas and spinach and broccoli. These are cabbages and kale. They're already fully hardened off. And then further over at this table here, all kinds going on. It's mainly zinnias to be honest. I've got my French beans which I want to get fully hardened off in the next few days and get them out and I've just got stuff everywhere. Lots of antirinums and lots of zinnias. I won't be eating any veg but I'll have a pretty garden that's for sure. This is all my tomatoes here. I'm just hoping that they'll start to get away a bit now because they've been very very slow again. Also in the garden, buckets of lettuce, red spinach. That one, I believe, is carrots, which haven't germinated yet. And there you go, I've got four buckets with patty pan squash in. I haven't grown them before. I was gonna put them up with the allotment, but I'm just so pressed for space. I decided I would put them in buckets in the garden. And then up there on the table, that's my New Zealand yams. They are fully hardened off now, but they're going to be staying in their buckets, in their pots until my onions are finished and I can get them into the onion border up with the allotment. These are all my buckets of salad. I decided I was going to grow salad in the back garden this year because um, we're usually up with the allotment in the morning and it makes more sense to be able to come out the back door at tea time and pick the salad and it's nice and fresh. It's coming on nicely. The, the lettuce is actually but the one thing that I would say doesn't seem to have been minding all these cold um, nights and all the cold weather we've had. It's looking quite good and we've had a few leaves off these. Apart from the lettuce, I've got a couple of types of kale. This is some chard. I've got carrots. I've got rocket, which is coming on really slowly. What's that? Spring onions, spinach, red spinach, uh, perpetual spinach all kinds of little bits and bobs that are growing but as i say slowly it's so torturously slow this year uh, apart from the lettuce so i just thought i'd add this in this bit of our garden we've got a um a little waterfall but it's sprung a leak we think and it was looking a bit of a mess getting all overgrown so kenny's dismantling the whole thing and uh, we've got some more liner to put down and he's going to dig it out a bit to make bigger ponds and then this board and next to it, which is just, I can never get it under control. It's just a whole mass, usually of pelagoniums, which spread everywhere, lots of different varieties. Um, and I never seem to have any success with it. So we've got a big kind of railway sleeper and we're going to terrace that just with one terrace and try and make some sense out of it. And this year, I think what I'm going to do is just put courgettes in there. 
and then next year I'll organise it with flowers. Well, this is looking pretty nice, isn't it? It's uh, pretty much the nicest looking border I've got at the minute. Uh, as you all know, we had just the most freezing April. I think it was the coldest April in a hundred years and the driest April since records began, something awful like that. And I think everybody's having the same problems. Everything's really set back. Everything's really slow. And a lot of things have been damaged by the frosts that we've had. Anyway, here we are in May, we've had plenty of rain. At least that's uh, helped a bit. Um, but I don't know about you lot, but where we live, it really still isn't that warm. I mean, it's warmer than it was. We aren't getting frosts anymore, um, but it's still not what it should be. However, this is the first border. This is my garlic here. It's doing really well. It looks nice. I've got red onions and yellow onions, and I've got some shallots over there. I've got some broad beans. Chard is doing well. And I also popped in some um, perpetual spinach in the back there just to fill that little gap. I'm pretty happy with this border. It's coming on nicely and it looks good. So coming over from that border into the next one, there's nothing going on in there. That's just a bunch of rocket. I had intended to put my runner beans in there. Um, runner beans are supposed to be perennial and I had left them in, just cut them down to the ground last year, but nothing's come up. Uh, not to worry, I'm just going to put them in another border anyway. And further around there, that is my raised strawberry bed. We'll go over and have a little look at that. So there you are, you can see lots of nice flowers coming on them. So hopefully we'll get a nice little strawberry crop on there. This is the strawberry second year. Well, the plants right around the very edge, it's the third year. And it's the plants in the middle, it's the second year. You're only supposed to keep them for three years to get the maximum crop. Um, so we've got another year out of these yet before I change them over. So this border here and the one behind, oh no, just this one. This one I planted with peas ages ago. I did that the last two years. I've just planted my seeds straight into the ground, but nothing's come up. I've literally got I think two or three peas have come up. I don't know why. I don't know whether it's the cold or the dry weather or mice have got them or whatever, I don't know. Uh, not to worry, I've got a lot of peas growing on. Um, well, I'm hardening them off just now, so I'll be getting them in soon. The border behind, I've got some more onions and some little bits of kaolettes. There you are, that's them there. The onions are coming on quite nicely. Look like they might need a little bit of a weed though, don't they? We've got a little cage around that one. There are kaolettes. And I think it was a couple of cabbages I put in there as well. They got bitten by the frost, the keylets. Um, but they're doing all right. I think they'll I think they'll survive. If you watched last week's video, you'll know this is where we put all our um I've got broccoli, I've got kale, and I've got cabbages in here, and we put up this frame last week to protect them from the birds. They're coming on nicely, they're fine, no problem there. It's quite hard to see through the netting, maybe, but yeah, cabbages, broccoli and kale, all protected from the birds and from the uh, cabbage whites. I hope that netting's fine enough. I think it is. I don't think a cabbage white butterfly would get through there. And on the end of this border, I've got a beautiful, big um, rhubarb, which is desperate to flower. I've taken off the flower heads a couple of times, but it's desperate to flower, so I'm just going to let it go. Uh, this border here is firing away, isn't it? It's my broad beans. I sowed them last autumn and they're doing fantastically. However, I have planted my main crop potatoes between the rows, um, which you're supposed to be able to do, apparently. The, the potatoes are slow and I mean it certainly could probably be partly because of the cold weather and the dry weather we've had but I am a bit worried that they're getting drowned out by these beans because the beans are so tall and bushy and the potatoes are a bit swamped anyway too late now to do anything about that we'll just have to see how they get on and hope for the best but I'll certainly have plenty of broad beans this year because they're flowering and everything looking beautiful so there you can see some of the potatoes kind of tucked in there and they're quite small and then over here I don't even know 
if there's any in there. Anyway, they'll just have to take their chances and we'll hope for the best. But look at how pretty those broad beans are with those lovely flowers. I'm just trying to sort out my tray of runner beans here. I've really tried hard to label properly this year, but seems I always fail in the end. I've got dwarf runner beans and I've got normal tall runner beans and I have labelled some of them but they are a bit mixed up and strangely the dwarf runner beans seem much stronger than the normal runner beans. The normal runner beans are like some of them are quite puny so I'm just going to try and sort them out because I need the tall runner beans on the uh, on the frame that Kenny's made. Um, he laboured away for a couple of days to get that up um, so hopefully it'll stand up strong. My runner bean frame last year, a little boy actually came up to us and said, what's happened to that? And I says, oh, I'm just not very good at building. And uh, he was just aghast and he said, uh, but what's happened to it? So I take it from that, that even little children can tell I'm terrible at building bean frames. So Kenny's done a better job this year anyway. Right, I'm gonna sort these out into two batches, dwarf and tall. This is the runner beans. We we'll put these in, was it yesterday or the day before? Kenny made the frame and I got them planted out at last. So after the runner beans, I've got another empty bed. I've got some French beans to put in there, but I actually haven't got as many as I thought. I thought I planted a lot, but I've had, I've had quite a lot of losses with the weather being so cold and the greenhouse not being heated. So French beans probably and other things will go in there. And after that, my last two beds are these two raised beds. That first one you can see, well, it's got a little bit of um, cress in there, but that's coming out. That has yet to be planted with, and I'm not 100% sure what's going in there yet. And the last one, we'll go along and have a look at that now. Again, not a massive amount going on in this bed. Uh, well, there's a bit, I mean, I've got me um, chives there, which are all flower and they are lovely. I've got some spring onions in front, you won't be able to see. I had lettuce, which I planted there probably about a week ago. These are my slug traps. Um, the birds haven't managed to pull these ones out, I'm glad to say. I think they got bored with these ones here. But they've eaten every lettuce I planted down to the nub. There's one tiny little bit over there. But not to worry, I'm not too bothered about that because I've got a lot of lettuce planting buckets at home. I've got some multi-sown beetroot here and here. I've also got some beetroot seeds planted here. We do get a lot of maize tail in this allotment. It keeps coming up, I have to keep pulling it. Um, some beetroot sown there, but not a lot of germination success. And this is the sorrel. Uh, so I've got quite a bit of planting still to do in this garden. All my tomatoes want to go out. Um, I don't like growing tomatoes in the greenhouse because I just don't like the smell. And the, uh, I grew them successfully last year out the doors. Um, but this year, well, we'll see, won't we? I've got the French beans to go in, as I say. I've got squash courgettes to go in. I've got, I, and I haven't got the room for everything I want to plant, so I don't really know what I'm going to do. I've got sprouts to go in, broccoli to go in. Yes, it could keep us awake at night if I let it. <laughs> All right, thank you for joining me to have a little look around my allotment. Um, quite a few empty borders. Things are a bit slow, and I think it's the same for everybody, isn't it? Never mind, chin up everybody. We've got a whole summer ahead of us and I'm sure um, things are going to start rocketing up now. Hope so.